Okay, my dear friends, we are on a psychological journey. A journey that began on the first day of Pesach and has been continuing all these days. We're in day 26 right now. And this journey will complete itself on the sixth day of Sivan, Yoim Ha Shishi, otherwise known as Shavuos, the day of receiving the Torah. As we are making this journey, there's 49 days that we are going through a psychological purification, essentially combing through the internal technology of how we think, feel, what we yearn for, what we want in this world, and how to guide ourselves towards holy things, positive things, loving things, as opposed to using the internal drive and letting it be hijacked by negative forces. And each one of these days, these 49 days, as we explained before, is seven sets of seven. The seven lower powers, the seven spheres, known as Chesed, Gevur, Tiferas, Netzach, Hoid, Yesoid. These Malchus, these powers, each one have a subset. To make things very simple, we'll give an example of the general power we're in now, and then the specific quality of how that's expressing in our soul. And each one of these days is an opportunity to fix that part of us. This is like a 49-day La Havdil Tony Robbins seminar of, of combing through and unleashing the beast, unleashing the, in this case, it's unleashing the neshama, unleashing the power within, and all with the purpose of being able to have the greatest, closest relationship to God, the greatest, closest relationship to our friends and loved ones, our wife, our kids, and have the greatest relationship to ourself. Yes, my dear friend. How come you mentioned seven of the spheral ten? So we mentioned uh, in the previous year, we explained the whole system of that the first three are um, essentially above us, so to speak. They're intellectual, whereas the lower seven begin the process of now actualizing the vision of the first three, of Chabad. So practically, we're now actually going into real, uh, the concrete actualization of vision. Now we're seeing how well are we able to actualize a vision that's deep inside of us. The vision that's deep inside of us comes at different times of the year. Rosh Hashanah is a big time where you have that vision. That's why it's the Rosh of the whole year. It's the head of the year. Other times of the year, we start purifying. You might have had a vision to accomplish something, but how much is it now actually coming into fruition in a holy way? Or is that vision being hijacked somewhere along the way by different forces? So who knows which major energy we're in now? What's the... Netzach. We're in Netzach. We're in Netzach. I want to talk about Netzach for a moment. Anybody know what the word Netzach means? So it has two main meanings, yes, victory and, and endurance. Netzach means eternity. Yeah, Tzad. Remember your name again? Eitan. Eitan, that's right. How do we know that we're in Netzach? Like, um, we're on that level that we know where we are. Because the 49 days, starting from the day after Pesach, counting towards Shavuos, we've been given from Mount Sinai that each one of those days, the first seven, the first week, corresponds to Chesed. Seven days of Chesed. And then the next seven days is seven days of Gevura. The next seven days is Tiferes, the next seven days is Netzach. So we're in the fourth part of the journey. And within Netzach, we'll talk if we have time at the end, that we're in the part of Netzach, which is called Hoid Shebe Netzach. How Hoid is now completing the energy of Netzach. Yesterday's Shabbos was Netzach Shebe Netzach. How Netzach itself is expressing itself through Netzach, which is very powerful. Let's talk about Netzach in general. So I'm reading from a very special sefer called Sif Seichen. So he says like this, Segulas Hazmanhu, 
the power of this time during week number four. And just to give one more bit of context, all the reason why we're purifying ourselves is because Hashem is going to give us the Torah once again this year. But if we don't have the character traits that are appropriate, then we can't integrate the Torah. If somebody gives a gift, but the person doesn't have the wherewithal to appreciate the gift, it's as if they didn't really give it to you. Because you don't have a way of integrating it. Let's make a very you know, simple, coarse example. If somebody doesn't know how to drive a car, and you give them a car, that's not great. You give a baby a car, doesn't really do much for him. Give him a lollipop, now we're talking. So as you mature, you give somebody a book of great wisdom, but they don't know how to read. So for them, there's no use. They can't, they can't interface with the technology. Got a charger for the phone? Yeah. Oh. The wrong thing. You have to have a way to interface with the thing. So the Torah wants to come down to us. The Torah is only able to be interfaced with us if we have the right character traits, which is also what we call Derech Eretz Kadmal Torah. Before you receive Torah, you have to start to perfect oneself, that your character traits, to purify oneself, that you could receive this relationship. So we're in the week of Netzach, and Netzach is a very powerful idea. The Midah of Netzach, and that we're fixing it this week, that anything that we did this in our life, really, during this week we're able to perfect the following idea. Anything in our life, welcome brother. Oh, everyone got some nice smoothie life. Now we're ready to go. Anything that happened, take a seat, Sadiq. Anything that happened in my life where I was utilizing the power of Netzach. Netzach means victory. Netzach means to flex. But I was doing it not in a holy way. I was using Netzach not for the sake of Hashem. I wanted to show my victory. I wanted to show my power. I wanted to flex over this guy. I was bench pressing more than the other guy just to impress the girl. So, you're utilizing the power of Netzach, you're utilizing the power of victory, but not in a positive way. You're not using that energy in a positive way. So now, during this entire week, you have the opportunity to fix if there was anything in your life where you were ever using the power of victory for your ego, using the power of victory just to puff up your own status, not in the holy way, this is a time during these days that you could use the power of netzach, of victory, but channel that energy towards something positive. That there are things that we want to be victorious in. How about this one? You got this vibe that you just want to say this nasty piece of Lashon Hara. Disgusting. You want to just talk very bad words about this person. And you overcome that desire. You're victorious over that desire. That's holy victory right there. You see these golden arches. The golden arches, boys. My day is 25 cent Big Mac on sale. Five for a dollar. The golden arches. It's Trafe. Golden arches. Trafe. Golden arches. Trafe. And you're victorious over that? Because Hashem says, that he doesn't eat treif. That's holy netzach. That's holy netzach. So the victory that we're really talking about here is the victory over the evil inclination. The victory to do things that support the real identity of who you are. 
You guys know when you do things and you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I respect myself for what I just did. Sadly, sometimes we do things and we look at ourselves in the mirror and we say, I disrespect myself for what I just did. I don't want to be a person that looks himself in the mirror and disrespects himself because I do things that are beneath my dignity. So this week of Netzach, you're pumped up with this powerful energy to start being victorious, to live up to the greatness of who you're supposed to be and to the dignity and the royalty and the majesty of who you are as a soul. And not just a, a person of instinct and animalistic desires. So this is the power of Netzach. And therefore, any single thing that is getting in the way of you living up to your potential, in the week of Netzach, you could start to remove those obstacles. You could start to overcome those obstacles. Now, it's a powerful idea because we mentioned before that Netzach means to be victorious. But Netzach also means to be eternal. And I don't think it takes too much effort to meditate why that would be, that those two words are the same concept. Because you can only be eternal if you're able to be victorious over the things that are trying to pull you down. If there's forces that are trying to usurp your authority, your dignity, and you can't be minatseah, you can't overcome them, then you're not much of a Davar Nitzchi, you're not so much of an eternal element. And therefore, the very things that are trying to prevent your eternity, your eternity as a soul, eternity as a people, there is an energy now that you could overcome forces that would try to usurp the power of goodness. And let me ask you, my friends, is there anything which is an ultimate netzach, pure netzach? There's a relative netzach, and then there's pure netzach. Netzach means eternity. Netzach means to overcome, to be, to be victorious. So what is the ultimate netzach in the world that will be victorious? Let's even go even more, zoom out. The slaughter of the Yitzhak. said yes, but who, what... Who is Netzach? Hashem. Hashem is Netzach. Hashem was, is, and forever will be. You ever think about that? When you say Hashem's name, you should think, Hashem, you always existed. So how far does your mind go back? You always existed. Just keep going. Okay, where are you holding by? I don't know. I'm like sometime in ancient Rome right now. Oh, new kid on the block. Just keep going. <laughs> go, go all the way back. Yeah, okay, I'm holding somewhere by like, you know, Avram Avinu. Keep going. Noach. Adam and Chava. You know, now, now we're in like primordial. Day six, day five, day four, three, two, one. Beratius, same Hashem, that's here right this second. And same Hashem that will be here for eternity. So Hashem is Netzach, and Hashem has the power of Nitzachon, that you can't beat Hashem. That's when Mashiach comes, anybody who was with Hashem, it'll be good for them. Anybody, Chas V'Shom, that was trying to fight Hashem. What happened to Titus, my friends? Anybody learn the story of Titus? He tried to fight Hashem. And, and he said, and he, was, he went, came to the base of Mikdash, destroyed the base of Mikdash. Don't mess with the base of Mikdash. That's all I have to say about that. Don't, Achashverosh, it wasn't. Don't mess with the base of Mikdash. This is Hashem's home. Kaviyachal. So Titus goes, he's, he's stabbing the paroiches, blood's coming out. He thinks he killed Hashem. Hashem just did that to pump up his ego that the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And he's taking the spoils back to Rome and he gets into the, his ship and what happens? 
at high sea, the ship starts moving. The waves start lifting. He realizes the ship is going to sink. There's a massive tsunami out by sea. And he says some very powerful words to God. Talk about chutzpah. He says, Hashem, oh, I see you drowned the ancient Egyptians. Oh, and you drowned in the time of the Mabel. Oh, I see that your power, Hashem, is only when you're with water. But I'm Titus. I'm the emperor of Rome. Come fight me on dry land, and then we'll see who will win. Titus, you fool! So Hashem makes it calm. Titus goes on to dry land. What happens to him? A little mosquito fly, some bug goes into his nasal cavity, implants itself on his brain. Some type of a viral, bacterial, something like that, <laughs> something, you know, and starts eating away at his brain. And the Gemara describes what would happen. He started eating away all the time at his brain, and it got to the point that he couldn't handle it. But he walked one time by, somebody was hitting an anvil. And what happened? Because the loud anvil was so powerful, it stopped the bug from eating his brain. So he felt at peace. So he told the person, he said, I'll hire you all day. Just sit beside me all day. Just hit the anvil. All day. And eventually what happened? He lost his hearing. So probably that would also happen, but something else happened. Everybody knows that there's antibiotic resistance, that organisms get used to something, and then they get more powerful. And therefore, also this organism got used to that sound, and it no longer helped. The banging still made this, this disease eat at him, and it ended up eating his brain. And they did an autopsy and they saw what happened to it. It was the whole Gemara over there. And the Gemara basically concludes that he said, you're going to try to fight God. So Hashem said, I'm going to bring the smallest little creature, land creature, to destroy you. Don't try to fight God because God is Netzach. God is eternal. And therefore God has the power of Nitzachon, will continue to do whatever it takes. And in the end, Hashem will reign as the king. Hashem will be the king on all the land. And like the prophet says, Ani Rishon, Ani Acharon. Hashem says, I'm the first, I'm the last. There's none other but me. In other words, show your loyalty to that which will be here forever. And to the degree that you tap into that energy, you will also have the power of Netzach. The things that are trying to bring you down, you'll be able to overcome those things in a very, very powerful, powerful way. Now, who else is Netzach? The Jewish people. Netzach Yisrael lo Yishakir. The miracle of Jewish survival is an is a unbelievable phenomenon. It's a miracle. It's miraculous. And the Torah says everything that will happen. It'd be a horrible way to start a religion. I'm going to write this book. In the book, okay, if we're making the whole thing up, everything is going against the Jewish people. Because you know what we're going to do? We're going to make this people always small. To always stay small. Which is itself, I don't know how you could predict that, but don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll try to put that one in, which, by the way, means if the Jews ever get big, then the book is falsified. The Jews always remain small. And don't worry. Here's a great way to make sure that the religion does not continue. We're not also a religion. We're a family. Here's a great way to make sure it doesn't continue. We're going to make sure that in the book it says that you're going to be scattered to the four corners of the globe. That's a great way to make sure that you don't stay together and you don't stay eternal. And, by the way, the homeland will be this tiny piece of land like this. That's all. Nothing more. Makes sense if you want to have an eternal people, they should have a lot of land. And don't worry about that. We'll make sure, though, that against all odds, a great way to make sure this nation stays eternal is the Torah says everyone's going to hate them. 
And every one of those prophecies have come true. And then the final prophecy is in the end of days, the Jews will return to the land. We'll come home. We just want this tiny spot, that's all. A tiny spot, and we want to live in peace with everyone. We want peace with everyone. And our mission is to help share with the world that just this little peace will live in peace with everyone here. Full peace. Just this little spot. And if you want to talk about the authenticity of the Torah, come, we'll talk about it with you. We'll share with you. I'm not asking for anything else, and we want to do it in a peaceful way. This is the eternity. Netzach Yisrael lo yeshaker. So this is the energy of this time of Netzach. But I want to go into one more idea, is that we said every single week has a specific energy in it. So what's today? We mentioned it in the beginning. Today is 26 days of the Omer. Today is what we call Hod Shebenetzach. So what is Hod Shebenetzach? So first of all, what are we fixing in general during this week? The power of being victorious, but victorious for holy things, and not using victory to just pump up our ego and stuff. That's treif. To use victory to overcome the Yetzirah. But now we're going, and who do we connect to? to connect to that eternal power of victory, Hashem. You should be davening a lot to be close to the eternity of Hashem that will give you victorious power over all the stuff you're facing in your life. Very practical way to overcome stuff that you feel is getting the best of you right now. Your anger problem, your impatience, your addiction to your phone, whatever it is. Use this week to empower yourself with Netzach. But now we said today is Hod Shibanetzach. What does Hod mean? Hod means to acknowledge and to give thanks. So what is the giving thanks part of Netzach? So I'm going to explain something. This is from a great Kabbalist, the Masak Midvash, who wrote every day of Sir Sa'imer ideas to think about. So he said part number one, between you and God. When we talk about the acknowledgement and saying thank you, that part of Netzach, it means when you are successful in fighting the Sahara, talk to Hashem about it and say, thank you for giving me the power of Netzach. You hear that? That's Hod Sheba Netzach. The power of acknowledging. Hashem, thank you for letting me make the good decision of making the move from Herzliya here to Yerushalayim today to learn some Torah and Torah. Thank you, Hashem. Because there was maybe 50 other things that were telling me to stay there, just hit the beach for today, whatever it was. Thank you for helping me make a move to do something that I know is good for my neshama. So thank you for that, Hashem. And any time that you feel victorious in making a good decision for your soul, thank Hashem for that. Then you're completing the power of thanks within Netzach. Let's go one step further. There was a great, great Tana named Rabbi Nechunya ben Akana. And every time that he would leave the base Medrash, it's in, the, it's in your Gemaras, he would say a little tefillah. He would say, thank you, Hashem, that I was able to come today to the base Medrash. Thank you for making me one of the people that sit and learn. And don't sit just on the street corners, you know, doing nothing, shooting the breeze, whatever. Just playing, you know, playing on my phone all day. Thank you for making me have the merit that I did something worthy with my life today. That I made that decision. So think about that. Now look what he said. He wasn't thanking God for a physical victory because there's four people that have to say thank you to Hashem. Anybody know who those four people are? The Torah talks about four people. You better say thanks to Hashem. People who come out of jail, they survived. If they were incarcerated, not for the right reasons, and they came out of there, hostages, they have to say thank you to Hashem that I came out. Thank you that I'm able to come out of this bad situation. People who cross dangerous areas, they cross a, a sea. To go over the sea is not a simple thing. To travel across a desert, People who travel across the desert have to say thank you. And people who uh, had a life-threatening illness and then got better, 
So all sorts of dangerous situations that my body was at risk, I'm thankful to you, Hashem, that I'm out. I'm thankful to that I'm out. So look what he says. If you have to thank Hashem that your physical body was saved, all the more so, you have to thank Hashem when your soul was saved and you saw the golden arches and you kept driving. <laughs> and you wanted to say Allah Shanhara. You wanted to say evil speech against somebody and you stopped yourself and you saved your soul. If for your body you have to thank Hashem, you guys know what we say in Yeshiva, Koshkin, all the more so, you can use your thumb here, all the more so, you have to say thank you to Hashem when your soul was saved. So that is thanking Hashem, being thankful for the victory over the Yetzirah. That the force of darkness wanted me to, to lose myself in this negative thing, and I was able to overcome that. I'll just leave you with one more. Two more, short ones. When you're able to show up every day and learn and do positive things, Thank Hashem for that. And realize, Hashem, if you weren't helping me, I couldn't do this. You made it to Shachos today, again and again and again. Thank Hashem, wow. You helped me get up. These are things between you and Hashem, but I want to add one more, between you and your friend. How do you help that there should be acknowledgement and thanks for victory? Let's say your friend does something good. What you should do is you should acknowledge that he did this amazing thing. He gives one beautiful example. Let's say he did something good that will go on for eternity. He gave charity. He sponsored a safer. He built a yeshiva. You should publicly thank him that other people learn that they should also invest in eternal things. We should have the merit, my dear friends, to connect to the power of Netzach, yeah. to be connected to Hashem in the deepest way, to unify together and be peace in the world. Amen.